joining us today to learn more about building an executive presence with thought leadership. I'm Mandy, and I'm from the customer marketing team here in Asia Pacific. And I'm so excited to be able to bring you this session today as thought leadership content is something that can really help increase the engagement of your marketing campaigns. Before we dive into the content, I wanted to do some housekeeping items with you to ensure that you have the best experience with us today. Firstly, there's no phone audio connection for this session. If you're having trouble hearing us, please try using your headphones or increasing the volume to maximum level. If you are having other technical difficulties, please ensure that flash is enabled and try refreshing your screen or logging back in and out of ON24 if you continue to face troubles. Something that I always forget to do, but if you're logged into a VPN, please disconnect as that will increase the stability of the webinar for you today. Our team love hearing from you. So if you have any questions at any time, please submit them through the Q&A portal. We're here to help you. Also, we've got 10 minutes at the end of today's session to run through questions and answers. Please be patient as we try and answer as many as we can. On your screen, you will have a number of resources available to you during today's webinar. Please feel free to take the time to check these out. I've also included the slides for you to download if it's easier to view them that way. I'll also be sharing the slides and the recording of today's session within 48 hours. Then finally, we want to know how this session was for you today. So feel free to complete the customer survey form and let us know what you enjoyed or what we could be doing better. Today, we are really lucky to have two of our amazing content solutions consultants joining us today. They're really experts in this field. So firstly, to introduce you to Claire Austin, who's joining us from Sydney, and Olivia Kane, who is a content solutions consultant joining us from Singapore. All right, let's get started. Over to you, Claire. Okay, great. Let's get kicked off. So first of all, we're going to chat a little bit of just around what is, you know, kind of thought leadership and what are different areas that it falls into. You can see here on your screens, we've kind of like split it down into two key areas that we see of importance, which are individuals and brand. Now, for the sake of um, this session and for today, we're really going to focus on what does it mean for you as an individual? Because this is something that we're seeing is really growing in terms of importance on the platform. And it's something that we're all kind of grappling to understand how do we actually do this better? So when we think about this from an individual perspective, we might be wanting to look at this as an executive, maybe we want to become an influencer. Um, and there's probably three key areas that we're trying to influence. Number one is maybe we want to become more visible. Maybe we want to gain a little bit more uh, recognition within our industry. Secondly, is around um, thought leadership. So I want to be seen as a subject matter expert, a thought leader, someone that people come to when they think about this particular um, subject. And then thirdly, it is really around that idea of respect and being um, a leader, if you like. So you want your peers and um, people around you to kind of trust in you as that exec within that company and then potentially think about, gosh, I actually really potentially will buy from them because I really like what they do. I like what that leader is talking about. They seem to really know their stuff. So let's go into a little bit more around what we're seeing at the moment. I think the, the thing that kind of, I guess, for all of us is top of mind is how do we become more visible in this virtual world? And LinkedIn is definitely one of those ways that for B2B um, that we can really think about doing that. 
You got to see two examples here on your screen. The first one is from Mike, um, Mike Roman from the CEO of 3M. And he used the platform to basically talk about, well, what are we going to do to help in this situation? And here are some of the different medical supplies that, um, that we're going to increase the production of to help out in this situation. And then a very kind of different stance from the Marius um, CEO over there. He led with a very compassionate um, message around um, what they're going to be doing um, at the Marriott. And it was really to help um, with the associates there. So there's many different ways that execs can look at this, but it's probably even more prominent at the moment than ever before. And Olivia is going to talk a little bit more about that um, in a few moments. What we're actually seeing on the platform is that... Um, there's a lot of need for this at the moment. Nearly half of professionals are getting their information, perspectives, business updates, etc., from other business leaders via social media platforms. And this will have grown even more during the last five months with everything that we've seen because it's one of the main ways that people are able to connect right now. And if you think about, say, 10 years ago, this was just completely unheard of. This is not how we did business. It was not how we communicated. It just wasn't a common place. But more and more, we're seeing it, we're seeing it come into those kind of top three common uh, ways that people network, engage, um, and buy business. So I should say do business. So it is becoming a much, much bigger scope for businesses to be thinking about how do we bring our employees along this journey? And more importantly, how do I as an individual um, start to think about like, you know, what is it that I want to get out of this and how do I do this? Is it about helping to build my business? Is it about being a thought leader in this space? Um, or is it really just about being able to um, have some kind of sphere of influence? Um, a lovely quote here and something that has come from two experts over at Thorpe um, with Steve and Ken talking about this idea of thought leadership from executives, you know, especially on um, social. It's just expected now. It's very much the norm and it is a necessity um, out there. So what are we going to cover off today? We've got key three key areas that we are going to take you through. Number one is called Beyond the Buzz. So we want to talk to you about why thought leadership matters. So Olivia is going to expand on um, what I've just been talking about then. Secondly, defining your thought leadership. So what does it mean to you? So we want to give you some actionable takeaways where you can really think about how can you build this out for yourself? And then finally, a quick guide on activating this on LinkedIn. So some really nice little tips and tricks about how you can actually start doing this on our platform today. I'm going to now hand over to Olivia and she is going to take us through um, Beyond the Buzz. Thank you, Claire. So now let's talk a little bit more broadly about why thought leadership matters and to give you some ammunition and evidence on how you can actually broach this topic with your leaders. So the masses are actually looking towards leaders and leadership in general for answers and direction. In that same Edelman Trust Barometer study, we see that 76% of people are actually expecting CEOs to take the lead on change and also how we're going to be progressing past this period. People want reliable information from reliable resources. So CEOs are actually seen as the most trustworthy. So really smart brands are actually going to take advantage of this and make sure that we can enable a lot more trust in the CEOs and your organization as well. Out of a, a panel of about 100 international CEOs covering all business sectors, including financial services, retail, automotive, consumer packaged goods, more than 66 uh, 60 CEOs have communicated on LinkedIn since the beginning of the crisis and are seeing exceptionally high engagement rates. For example, what you can see here are engagement rates from any kind of executive content. And there was actually a 90% increase in engagement from pre-COVID to our current times. So right now is not the time to go dark. And we need to make sure that our CEO voices are in the forefront of this crisis. And there are a couple of CEOs that have already embraced this. For example, Andrew Penn, who is the CEO of Telstra. 
And he's doing this in a myriad of ways. He's actually showcasing gratitude to international teams, helping them manage through change. He's also showcasing how he's ensuring business continuity and also bringing forward what the company is doing to help the community and customers. Not only is he talking about different topics to that address different audiences, but also he's doing this in a different ways that actually flex our publishing platform. For starters, he's leveraging video. He's also doing long form and short form publishing, which we can actually walk you through today. Not only are professionals consuming these perspectives, but people who are actually making decisions, purchasing decisions are engaging with this content as well. So actually half of the decision makers spend one hour or more reading thought leadership per week. And we've been seeing this number grow over time. Now, if we translate the larger thought leadership data to focus on executive thought leadership, we can see that over half of professionals said that an executive social media presence positively influenced their purchase decision. Now, that's incredibly powerful. And over 60% said that they would be more likely to recommend a company if they followed that executive on social media. So what is in it for you? What's in it for you who will be publishing this content and making sure that you actually build this present online? Well, one one thing for starters is that you get to grow your network. You get to grow your network where you don't actually have to leave the office. You get to meet and expand your network, hopefully a more diverse network across your industry and functions and be able to learn from them. Also, you have an opportunity to become known in the industry, to be able to put yourself forward. And in a way, if you want to be known for something as creating really interesting videos or a very specific um, take or perspective on a topic, this is one way that you can do that. And you can establish a niche in terms of how you deliver your content. And ultimately, there is also a long tail goal, which is to increase business opportunities for you and your organization. The key points here, your social presence as an executive can impact the overall perception of your brand, your sales, and what people say about your brand to others. Three key areas to analyze when you're actually taking a closer look at your brand's health. However, this is not a more is better argument. The quality of actually what you create and deliver is just as important as your ability to participate. And now I'm going to hand it back to Claire, who's going to be talking about how you can actually define your persona and set your exact thought leadership strategy. Thanks, Olivia. We're going to move on to section two, which is all about defining your persona. Now, this is one of the best ways to get started when you're thinking about your strategy is who do you want to be? Who do you want to show up as? And as individuals, we have our, we have layers of, you know, multitudes of, um, of layers, I should say, um, in terms of that persona for us. However, when we look at leaders um, and often the styles that they portray, they often fall into kind of key categories. Um, And I'm going to show you what some of those can potentially look like. So there's kind of four key areas that we think um, that as thought leaders, you can show up as. And number one is all about being industry focused. So this is the visionary leader. They often share a lot of information that is around trends, perspectives, a lot of opinionated um, content. These are often um, of a very kind of high level within their company. They're often politicians as well. Second one is around that brand um, focused area. So these are people who are really trying to sell that CSR or that culture element of a company and talk about not just the product um, or the solution or the the people, it's about that whole holistic experience of that company um, and what they're trying to to do in that space. Thirdly, um, we do often have um, people who are fairly experts in that particular product or service that they're trying to sell. And these are people that we call guides. So they're all about trying to teach people um, how to actually use that particular product um, or service. Often these are are in the tech space. We see a lot of these um, product focused uh, thought leaders. And then finally, the people focused so these are um, people who are seen as being, you know, excellent leaders within their um, category. They're often giving career advice, personal growth, um, and they can often fall out of one of these different areas as well. So I'm going to go on and show you um, 
what these look like um, across the board. And we've got some examples from um, APAC and then also internationally as well. So this is Jacinda. And Jacinda, as you know, is a prime minister of New Zealand and very much seen as a leader um, by everyone around the world. It's like she's done an absolutely fantastic job in becoming that um, woman thought leader in politics, in community, in the economy. And she delivers her content um, and herself, her whole brand in a really, really authentic way, um, which is what people really like about her as a leader. She addresses a lot of different topics and she's very quick at being able to do this. So often when she comes out of cabinet, she will come onto social media and come onto LinkedIn and actually give updates on what they discussed, any policies that are coming into place to really get people up to speed. And that idea of being able to, one, do it in real time. So, you know, things are not kind of behind closed doors. Um, you know, people don't know what be, what's being talked about. She's just very real. Um, and so kind of, you know, the main way I can describe her is really what you see is what you get or you feel like that, which is a really great um, opportunity as a politician and leader in her position. All right, let's move on to the evangelist. So Satie over at Microsoft really epitomizes and embodies this evangelist persona. His activity on LinkedIn is endless and he does a lot around culture, values, corporate responsibility, tech innovation, and talks about the different ways about why they're building products, how you know they're making it for um, different minorities, um, whether that be for you know people with different disabilities, etc. They're trying to make products that are more accessible um, to all different um, to all different minorities within our community, and that's something that's super important to Satie um, because of his family and his son, and it's something that really comes through in his content and also in the culture that he's trying to build at LinkedIn um, at Microsoft, I should say. Okay, let's move on to Kate. So Kate is the founder of Story by Data and a really great example of what we would call the guide. She focuses on teaching people around data visualization, um, around machine, machine learning, deep learning. So it's some really technical different um, content. She does a lot of interviews with people um, and she's very much seen as an expert in this space now. And she's built this following up herself. Um, she does this um, hashtag called Daily Coding, which is a, a series of courses. And she's managed to make this into a real feature on the platform. Finally, um, the mentor. So um, this is a gentleman who is over in the UK called Tom Boston, and he is hilarious. If you ever want to see um, how humor is done on LinkedIn, I recommend that you check him out. He is over at um, Sales Loft, and he is a salesperson um, over there for them. But what he has also become is this mentor because of the way that he is managing to sell. People are kind of really opening their eyes up to, gosh, this is quite a different way um, that he's managing to do this he's using humor um he's being you know just kind of creating different personas um if you like if you check his content out you'll understand what i mean and it's helping to kind of um to teach others about how they can do their jobs um, in a better way so he's actually been asked to go on a lot of podcasts a lot of webinars to share how he um, how he's been so successful in his role. So you can see some examples in here of the different podcasts and webinars that he's on. So highly recommend checking him out if that's um, a space that you're looking to move into to kind of be more of that mentor and guide people into um, a certain role or um, position in their career. So there's three main topics that we know our members are really interested in hearing from their peers and their networks on LinkedIn. And this boils down to um, your industry, you and your company. So people always want to know what is happening in my industry. What are the different expertise that lie there? What's the news? What's the trends, etc. So how can you think about not just sharing that, but adding your opinion onto that or um, sharing out something that maybe um, is a little bit new and different to what other people might be sharing? Secondly is you. People want to know what you've done, what you failed at, what you've been good at, um, any advice that you have around how you got to your position or what you've learned, um, the roads that you've taken, really, really important. 
Um, so people, because they're, they're trying to get to the same place them often that you are. So if you can become that advisor or mentor for them, then they often really appreciate um, having that um, to be able to consume by themselves and not necessarily have to make that contact and constantly picking up mentors that they have to speak to face to face. And then finally, your company. So people like to see that behind the scenes look, you know, what do they actually do? What's it like to work there? Um, you know, anything that you're proud of or anything that your company is doing in the CSR space that you want to share, like this is a great opportunity to be able to do that because members really are interested in how different companies are doing, um, you know, building those teams and building culture. This is how I think you can make a really great um, kind of base for your strategy. It can be very overwhelming even when you have your persona. So they've been like, well, what is it exactly that I'm going to write about um, within that kind of p- persona? And so the three key areas that I'd, I'd advise and kind of thinking about is what is it that you think your re- audience really cares about? And what is it that you want to tell them? Um, secondly is what are your expertise? So what is it that you're really good at or really passionate about um, that you think that you can add some kind of value to them? And then finally, what makes you you? So this goes back to this idea of the authenticity, the being real. Um, It's super, super important. And it's how most people are successful in doing this. And all of those examples that I gave you um, before, that is the how they've become um, these particular thought leaders on the platform. So you're probably wondering, well, how can I do that? This is a great five minute exercise where you can start identifying some of your core values. So as you can see here, a pretty robust lips, uh, list sorry, of different topics and values that you can start thinking about as, um, as aligning with you as a professional and a person. And why we say as a person as well is it's this idea of being able to create an understanding of who you are that you want to drive throughout your career and you want to become known for. And you also want to leave a legacy as. So how do you want people to remember you? And this might not just be in the professional sphere. This can often span the two and often they blur. So really think about what are those five key values that you want to be known as and maybe even try and boil that down to three that you then use as key content pillars and all of the things that you talk about on LinkedIn can start leading up to those values. I want to share with you a study that was done um, by Edelman and LinkedIn in conjunction, and it was trying to work out how impacted people were by content and thought leadership content in particular. So the question that was posed to these people was, you can see it at the bottom of the page there, it is how frequently has the following occurred after you have engaged for a piece of thought leadership content? Now, there was multiple different answers, but these were the top characteristics of high value thought leadership. So the first one was around, it actually helps decision makers to explore potential challenges or new opportunities. Um, It points out things that they potentially have overlooked. So things that they might have thought of previously. And then finally, it includes guidance on how to respond in issues that have arisen. So being able to provide advice on how to deal with a potential issue is a really core thing that decision makers look to LinkedIn for. So some key takeaways um, from this particular section before I pass over to Olivia are um, really thinking about what are those key areas and topics that I want to be known for and how you're going to build your social presence around those because that's going to help shape your whole overall strategy. Number two, Try offering a new perspective. You want to be as authentic as possible, but offering opinions is something that people love and is really going to help you stand out. And then finally, be timely. So anything that you can do to be thought-provoking is really going to help people understand what you think about this particular topic or discussion and help them to probably formulate an opinion as well. We'll pass over to Olivia now to talk about activating on LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Claire. Now that we have our intent and our strategy nailed down, let's talk about activating on LinkedIn. 
Claire and I are going to be taking you to, through the two steps of activating on LinkedIn. First, I'll walk through how you can post, publish, and amplify, and then Claire will take over and chat to you a little bit about how you can measure and optimize the content that you're publishing. So let's get started. To use a most or the most often referred to metaphor, actually posting, publishing, and sparking a conversation on LinkedIn is similar to riding a bike. The more you post, the better you get at it and the easier it is. But a lot of people struggle with what to post, how often, and also just simply pressing the publish button because there is a lot of insecurity around that being like, well, do people care? How will people react? Is this important? What will people think? But The more, the most important thing is to really just get started with posting and engaging on our platform. And there are different ways and you can do that. There are four key ways to activate on LinkedIn, each with a variety of options. Articles can be for long or short form and give you a chance to tackle some of the more dense topics that you want to cover. Long form posts can function as your real time response on ongoing trends and issues much less formal. It's a great quick snapshot, especially because, you know, everyone comes to the LinkedIn feed to consume these shorter forms of posts to just get a snapshot on what's going on in the industry or in their field. Video actually unlocks a wealth of possibilities. It's also probably one of the most daunting formats as well. It You can actually range from long form to heavily produced to even just live man on the street, um, walking as you go. We've got some great examples from the highly produced to the very, very casual, you know, recording on your phone, and both can be just as effective. Last but not least, we also need to talk about commenting. How do you actually re-engage or continuously engage with your network? There's one thing to publish and post content, but actually to start a conversation and insert yourself in conversations that are going on the platform. Last but not least, I think a lot of People ignore the element of com- of commenting. It is a two-way street and it is a conversation you're trying to have after all. Every type of content you publish doesn't have to exist on your page. The simple act of commenting on other posts can actually open you up to new audiences and really build that brand reputation and also build your voice on the platform. So let's talk about some best practices for when you get started on publishing articles. Again, these are for well thought out positions you want to take on a topic. Try not to utilize this for a stream of consciousness of of the moment content. I think a couple of the key categories that we want to think about is in-depth perspectives, POVs, leadership and career building advice and mentorship, exposing your audience to your corporate culture and values. There is a sweet spot when it comes to length, and that's about a hundred, sorry, 800 to 2000 words. And that's how much time members are actually willing to invest in your piece of content. A really interesting way you can do this is, for example, what Ray Dalio is doing with drip feeding chapters of his book through long form publishing on LinkedIn. Another example in this space is from Lisa Seacat DeLuca. She's a director at IBM and one of the top voices on LinkedIn. She is consistently sharing how technology is impacting everyday life. But beyond that, she's actually focusing a good deal of her content on gender issues and broader tech community, and also supporting a number of initiatives through long form publishing. Short form posts are a great tool in your arsenal of content types. It's super snappy. It's very quick to do. And also it's really on the fly. The expectation here is that this is going to be a quick hit. One way I've seen these used interesting, interestingly is actually by showcasing polls or asking questions for your audience, really crowdsourcing input insights and also general sentiment from your audience. This is a really great way to gather insights and also to start a conversation. This is a great medium for those real-time reactions, quick POVs on current trends, and also daily wisdom or mentorship or even stories from your industry. So I think this is incredibly helpful to get a very small taste of what you could actually offer as your voice. And remember to use hashtags here as well. I like to use one to three hashtags so you don't come across as spammy and make sure that those hashtags are really tapping on the topics or what you're trying to cover or be known for um, in your posts. Sarah Blakely, um, the CEO of Spangs, is great at short form posting. One thing you get from her content is a, is a really great feeling of her personality and also just her, her authentic self on the platform. 
Video is a medium that I get asked for or asked about a lot. Um, when it comes to my client interactions, a lot of people want to embrace this format, but are still a little bit nervous on how to do that. And there's such a variety of ways and you can actually leverage video that it's hard to provide a silver bullet of answers. But a few ideas to think about when you're creating video is really bring forward tips and trends that are still very popular and tailor them to what you're an expert in or what your brand is an expert in. Simplifying complicated topics is incredibly popular. It's just like on the Reddit term, explain it like I'm five. You may not need to go that far, but it's a great way of thinking of really just making your concepts or topics or products and solutions really easy to digest in really snackable format. Recap videos are great, quick, low cost way to share your presence at events, whether they're be in person or more so now online. And also one thing that's incredibly important when it comes to video is to make sure that you have subtitles for every single video that you create. 85% of social media videos are actually watched in silence. And that's also because we have an auto mute function. So you want to make sure that you're actually attracting your audience and not detracting them by not having this function. Across all the content types, one thing I should mention is the concept of series. How our brains are actually wired is to consume content in a consecutive manner. Video lends itself to that. And here's an example from Nic Nicholas Thompson from uh, the e editor in chief at Wired. His most interesting thing in tech series have been heavily viewed and they are incredibly consistent. And the format is really simple, but high quality enough. And he has been able to continue these um, series through quarantine as well. I would also like to take this opportunity to let you know that LinkedIn Stories is actually coming to our audiences across the globe. Right now, the member experience is, av is available in Australia, and this is such a great way to share really inspirational snapshots to engage and inform your audience with an immersive full screen experience. Think about this as the too long didn't read format of either your short form or even your long form posting. And this can also really provide a human behind the scenes lens of any of the stories or any of the content that you're trying to create. Last but not least, some tips on commenting. Don't just add to the chorus of people trying to say the same thing. Try to add your unique perspective on what's being discussed. Don't go off topic, but try to add something to the conversation and making sure that Whatever you say really adds to the LinkedIn environment. Everyone's jobs are tagged to your profile. So it is a professional network. So converse as you would in an office setting. Someone who is really active and commenting on other people's posts is Melvin Greer, the chief data scientist at Intel. He really is active at posting on peers, employees for a job well done or interesting insights that are being shared, offering his unique perspective on articles and videos and really sparking that conversation. And being able to say, I agree or disagree or bringing different points of view to the table. So to wrap up, there are four ways to really amplify your reach. You've thought about creating content. We have a strategy. We know the persona that you actually want to embody on our platform, but here's some really interesting tact and tactical tips and tricks on to get you even further. Number one, make sure that you use hashtags because remember your audience can actually subscribe to very specific topics or hashtag. So you want to make sure that your content gets automatically fed into their feeds. This will increase your reach substantially. Also events, bring your professional community together through LinkedIn virtual events. This is getting incredibly, increasingly popular over time. Now, when you're actually thinking about your network, leverage your employees and peers, peers to actually share out your content and to actually evangelize the content that you're creating. So make sure that you're tagging and also reciprocating to anyone who is sharing out your content. And this leads me to the last point, which is mentions. Mention people and companies when appropriate to make sure that you're tapping into their networks as well. And now I'll hand it over to Claire, who will talk to you a little bit more about measurement and optimization. Thank you, Olivia. That was really useful. Some really great tips there that um, I certainly got a lot from. 
So finally, we are going to move on to talk about measurements and optimization. And this is the last thing that we are going to cover off today. Super, super important. Everything that we do um, in our lives, we love to set a goal for, right? And this is no different. We want to be able to set some kind of metric that we are then going to be able to measure against. Now, um, one thing I would say with this is there is no silver bullet for this. So there is no kind of one way that we would recommend necessarily doing this. It's really about adopting a bit more of a test and learn approach. It's really going to depend on um, a few different things, but it's really about you and how are you showing up and how are your audience reacting to that. And then there's a few things that you can start doing to basically um, test out what it is that is working. We split this down into three areas. It's about the what, the how and the when. So let's start firstly with the what. So this is about the different topics and headlines that you've chosen to talk about. Understanding are they the things that people are actually interested in and are people kind of starting to engage with it, comment with it? Is this something of interest um, to the people that you're trying to attract and speak to? Secondly, is all about the how. So this is about testing different formats. So are people engaging more with video or are they engaging more with a longer form post that you have written? So again, it comes back to just understanding a little bit more about the people that um, you're trying to speak to and trying to build that audience around and seeing, well, what is it that they prefer? Um, We know that video performs really well on the platform. We also know that people within some industries actually still prefer longer form content. So as I say, no silver bullet for this. It's really going to be a bit of a test um, situation on it. And then finally, when do you post? Um, I would recommend trying the morning time. This seems to be some of one of the better times when people are going online and checking all of their different apps, just as I'm sure you do. It's certainly what I do when I get up um, in the morning and I'm going about my morning routine. So it's always a good time to try and do that. However, that is not necessarily going to work for everyone everywhere. So again, you might find that three o'clock in the afternoon when people are having a bit more of a, a, you know, a slump, that that's when they're going back online and looking at more content and trying to get some ideas to refresh their brains. Finally, I just want to talk about quality versus quantity and some of the KPIs that you can be thinking about adopting around this. Comments is 100% the best way to go around this. It's great to get lots of likes, but if people aren't actually commenting on your content, then the likelihood is is that it's not actually going to travel up the feed. So you're going to actually get less engagement on it overall. So the more comments, that means the more people will probably eventually start to see it because that's something that the algorithm ranks and likes to um, likes to have as a, as a, as a metric there. Secondly, the thing about the comments is that you're actually getting really qualitative, um, engagement on there. So you can start a bit more of a conversation. You can really get people, um, understanding what people are actually interested in within that topic, maybe get a bit of a debate going. So again, it helps you to keep on being able to contribute to that conversation and to meet new people within your network who are wanting to, to talk about the same thing. As a secondary metric, definitely um, check out your own personal dashboard and you want to be looking at things like views and feed, your likes, your shares. Um, and if you're looking at this from a brand perspective, then you might want to be looking at your follower growth as well. Okay, a couple of key takeaways um, before we finish off and go to Q&A. Number one, I think we've said it a lot today, but authenticity is the key. Just be yourself. Think about what it is that are the two or three things that uh, really kind of, I guess, make you you are the things that you want to talk about and keep your topics to those two or three pillars. Consistency, really, really key and super important. The more that you post, the more engagement that you're going to get and the more um, that you're going to be able to build up that thought leadership within your audience over a long period of time. 
Timeliness we find is important. So if you can be talking about particular topics that are, um, you know, high high points of conversation at the moment, then that is going to help to um, help you to have more of a gateway into that conversation and for people to see you as a, a potential kind of thought leader or industry expert in that space. And the last one is around patience. Patience is really important on this journey. It is not going to happen overnight. You will definitely need to invest in this and to be able to post on a frequent basis um, to see this build up over a period of time. A wonderful quote from Leo um, Tolstoy, which I absolutely love, the two most powerful warriors are time and patience. I'm going to leave you with that and we are going to move on to our Q&A. Thank you very much for your time today and I hope you've got something out of the session.
Thank you.